Are you climbing for the first time? Maybe you found a local climbing gym in your area, but you have no idea where to start. In this video, we wanna talk about a couple things that we tell everyone we take climbing for the first time. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I'm Gray and we're the Vertical Voices. In today's video, I have Nate, Bella, and Janai with me and they're gonna demonstrate a couple things that we're talking about. The things that we tell every single person that we take climbing with us for the first time. So we're gonna leave some time codes in the comments below. So feel free to jump around in the video about the things we're gonna be talking about. But let's get started with that first one. All right, so we're gonna take a look at this blue problem right here. And the first tip that we're gonna talk about or trick that you should know when going to the climbing gym for your first time is using your center of gravity to your advantage. Now the center of gravity of an object, or in this case, a person, is considered to be the point at which weight is evenly dispersed and all sides are in balance. While many objects have fixed centers of gravity, a climber's center of gravity can shift as they change body positions on the wall. Sometimes this concept can be difficult to understand, especially if you're brand new to climbing. One of the easiest ways to ensure your center of gravity is being used to your advantage is to pull your hips in as close to the wall as you can, as Nate has been doing here in this climb. You can bring your center of gravity closer to the wall from a sideways position by twisting your hips so one side is facing the wall and both knees are facing the same direction, as seen on the left. You can accomplish the same thing from a frontal position with knees facing opposite directions of one another, if the climb allows, as seen on the right. Now it's worth mentioning that one position or technique isn't necessarily better than the other. The route itself will oftentimes dictate the necessary body position, as it is the case with most things when it comes to climbing. Okay, so let's take a look at this side-by-side -side comparison where we have three examples so we can better explain and understand the mechanics of what's actually happening here. Okay, so on the left again, we have the example of a sideways body position, and on the right, we have an example of the frontal body position. Both are being used to pull Nate's hips into the wall, thus allowing him to use his center of gravity to his advantage. All right, so let's take a look at this last example in the center and see what's happening here. Nate almost immediately slips off as he approaches the climb. There doesn't seem to be any intentional positioning of his body, and because of this, his hips swing far out from the wall. Okay, take a look at these arrows. I've placed them here in each of the shots to show how Nate is being affected by gravity in relationship to his body positioning on the wall. Because Nate's center of gravity is pulled close into the wall, his weight is actually focused directly onto the footholds, allowing him to stay in contact with the wall. In the center example, we can see that Nate's body is actually being pulled out and away from the wall, which means his body will naturally have to exert more energy grabbing the handholds as the full weight of his body is pulling against his hands and fingers. It will be more difficult for his feet to remain on the holds, which will result in him falling as we saw earlier in this video. All right, let's take one more side-by-side -side look at this climb to see what Nate's doing. On the left, he's pulling his hips into the wall using his center of gravity to his advantage. And on the right, as you can see, his hips are far from the wall and gravity is pulling him out. While it seems that he's actually still able to do the climb, his body is actually exerting more energy in his muscle groups to remain in contact with the wall. It seems as though Nate's going at relatively the same pace and speed in both of these attempts. So an argument could be made that body positioning isn't that important. While Nate may be able to get away with it on this blue V2, when it gets to higher rated problems, body positioning will become essential to staying on the wall. Now the second thing we're gonna take a look at in this video is going to be footwork. Now we'll do an entire video in the future that'll go in depth about proper foot technique, but for the sake of this video, let's go over the basics. Take a look at this pink V2 and watch Donai's technique as he climbs this. So right off the bat, if you take a look at Donai's foot placement, you'll notice he's doing what most climbers actually do when they first get to the climbing gym and try for the first time. As he goes for each hold, he uses the side and arch of his foot to make contact with the holds. Now again, this is a pretty common mistake that we see, and it's probably because most beginner climbers aren't used to standing on holds that are very small in size. It's almost natural to think that using a larger part of your foot will give you a better edge in maintaining contact on those smaller holds given that more of your foot is actually on the hold itself. However, when it comes to climbing, this is not the case. 
The primary thing to consider when it comes to proper footwork when climbing is the usage of your toes. Simple physics will tell us that a larger amount of weight on a smaller surface will actually provide more force. This means you actually have a better contact and greater chances of staying on smaller footholds if you use the tips of your toes rather than just the sides or arches of your feet. One of the primary advantages to using the tips of your toes is that it gives you an unrestricted range of motion allowing your entire body to pivot from left to right, which can actually really help you position your body to reach the next hold, as seen on the left. If you rely too heavily on using the sides or arches, the bigger parts of your feet, you can see that you are restricted in your range of motion, which makes pivoting far more difficult if not impossible. Another great advantage to using your toes is that it allows you to step up onto those footholds. It may not seem like a lot, but those couple of inches might be the difference of you actually grabbing that next hold that might seem just too far away. The third thing we want to talk about in this video might seem simple, but it's very easy to miss, and that's simply keeping your arm straight when approaching and sending a climb. Let's take a look at this white V1 and see what Bella does as she climbs it. All right, let's pause right here and look what's happening with Bella's arms right off the bat. Now, it might not seem like anything, but if you look closely, you can see that her arms are found in a locked, almost L-shaped position. The problem with this is that our upper bodies contain the smaller muscle groups, including our arms. In this case, Bella's biceps and forearms are unnecessarily engaged in this climb. This means those muscles are going to fatigue much faster, and you'll be left feeling exhausted and pumped. Think about it this way, if you're going grocery shopping and you're carrying a bunch of bags, or in this case, if you're carrying your climbing bags, is it easier to hold them with your arms by your side or up next to your shoulders? Think about it. It is far easier to carry your bags down by your side with a full extended arm. This exact same concept applies to climbing. All right, let's get back to that white V1 that Bella was working on and see how she sends this project with a full extended non-engaged arm. All right, so the fourth thing we're gonna talk about in this video is going to be the difference between stepping up and pulling up. Let's take a look at this pink V2 and see what Nate does. All right, let's actually watch that one more time. All right, I want you to notice right off the bat, right here, once again, right here, and one more time, right about here. Notice the range of Nate's motion. If you look closely, you'll notice that most of his moves are coming from the power of his bicep and upper body strength. Now, this is something that's completely doable, but again, when it comes to harder routes, you'll find that you're burning energy a lot quicker by pulling up rather than by utilizing the stronger muscle groups that are in your legs to push. All right, let's take a look at this yellow V4. It's a little more difficult, and it actually might require Nate to push with his legs rather than just pull with his arms. Look at this motion right there. In situations just like these, where there might be fewer handholds, or the holds are just further apart in general, it's gonna require the climber to push with their legs to send the project. All right guys, we're nearing the end of the video and we're at our fifth and last point, and that is climbing with friends. I think one of the biggest things to note here is that climbing is a social sport. There's just no getting around that. Sometimes we go to the gym and we can find ourselves there for three, four, maybe even five hours at a time. And the thing is, we're usually not climbing for the entirety of that time. 
but we're sitting on the mats, talking to people, building relationships, watching other people, giving them beta, giving advice, taking advice. And there's something so special about that. Something I've noticed with a lot of beginner climbers is they're often hesitant or even afraid to climb with people who might be a little stronger or more skilled than they are. Now that might be because of pride or maybe even insecurity, but man, I gotta tell you, if you wanna get better at climbing, there is nothing like climbing with someone who knows what they're doing and can show you the ropes, no pun intended. But I would have to say the most important aspect of climbing with friends is just having a good time, being in community, and doing something you love with people that you love. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. We want to hear from you. Let us know in the comments below what you felt was most helpful. If you liked the video, hit that like, subscribe to our channel, go give us a follow at Vertigo Roses. And if you haven't yet watched our latest video on our climbing session, go ahead and watch it right here, and we will see you guys next time.